Okay, um, so welcome to the latest video in your forces module 10.1e um, and anyone who indeed isn't 10.1e who's watching this video, which me, if you're watching it and have been assigned to watch it, it must mean that it's you're at that place in the course. So um, we're going to talk about acceleration and velocity time graphs and how to work out acceleration, what it is and how to figure it out from a velocity time graph and do some practice. So. Um, so the first thing to remember it's not the same as a distance time graph a velocity time graph so there's slightly different rules um, and uh, we're going to go through them so to start off with I'd like you to pause the video and um, and um, copy down these two equations so you've got a word equation for acceleration there and you've got an, ex uh, an equation for um, acceleration using um, symbols at the bottom so press pause and copy down these two equations and this blue box, please. So uh, a few things to mention about uh, acceleration is that um, if something's velocity is changing, um, there must always be an acceleration. Um, and remember, velocity is speed with direction. So either the speed is getting faster or slower. So in day-to-day -day life sometimes you hear people say deceleration that is just negative acceleration all right um, and the other thing to bear in mind is that um, you can travel at a steady speed but your direction can change and because you need both both um, speed and direction to make velocity then if the direction part is changing the velocity must be changing and if the velocity is changing the acceleration must be changing um, just a note about the way this line of the formula is written so delta velocity mean uh, this triangle here is a delta if you're not familiar with it it means change in and change in something is always the final state minus the initial state so here we've got the change in velocity the top line which we call the numerator being v minus u v is final velocity and u is initial velocity so um, there are many acceptable units for velocity um, you not might not be measuring your velocity in um, sorry there's many acceptable use um, units for velocity and acceleration uh, because um, velocity might be in miles per hour might be in kilometers per hour might be in kilometers per second if you're talking about fast moving space objects and that will um, affect your unit for acceleration so I wouldn't let that worry you too much but the most common one that you need to be aware of is this unit here which is um, m slash s squared and we'd say meters per second squared and another way of saying that is meters per second per second all right, and, and we might go on to just break down exactly what that means at a later time. So we're going to be able to calculate acceleration and we're going to be able to interpret velocity time graphs. So um, take you through an example question here. So a car starts from rest and accelerates to 10 meters per second in five seconds. What's the acceleration? So step number one is extract the information from the question. So it says the car starts from rest. That must mean our and that means our initial velocity, which is a u, is zero. So I write that down. And it, it says it accelerates to 10 meters per second in five seconds. So that's the final velocity it accelerates to. So that's my v. And it takes five seconds to do that. So um, that's my time. And it's asking me for the acceleration. So I write down a equals question mark. So this stage, which you must always do, is extracting the information from the question. The next stage is to write down the equation and rearrange it if necessary. So the, the equation for acceleration is A equals V minus U divided by T. So you write that down in step two. Then you substitute your, and in this case, we're in a, a good situation where we don't need to rearrange the equation because A is on its own on the left side of the formula. And in maths, you would say that's already the subject of the formula. Put your numbers in. 
to write it out again uh, with the numbers in place of the letters. So 10 minus 0 divided by 5. And then step 4, give an answer with a unit. So 10 minus 0 is 10, divided by 5 is 2. Because um, velocity is in meters per second and time is in seconds, the answer will be in meters per second squared, m slash s squared. So, pause the video and um, have a go at these three questions using a calculator and paper using the strategy that I just showed you. Okay, so let's go over the corrections. So, correct your first answer using this one, so give yourself a tick if you have that blue box. Extracting the information correctly, you should have written the formula, put the numbers in, and got to that answer. Likewise, question two, you should have extracted this information, written down the formula, put the numbers in, put down this answer with a unit. And notice I'm trying to keep my equal signs underneath each other. The third question then. So um, a few changes here. Uh, you should have noticed that velocity was not in meters per second, but in kilometers per second. So you should have extracted that information here, um, put in the numbers, and in this case, you would end up with 12 kilometers per second divided by 8 seconds. So you'd end up with 1.5 kilometers per second squared. All right. Good. So um, pause the video and do two things. First thing is put the copy this out and put the words in the gaps. And second thing. Um, make sure that you uh, copy down these rules. So these are the rules which uh, allow you to understand how to interpret a velocity time graph. The gradient is the acceleration. Flat, flat sections represent fixed velocities. Above the x-axis, uphill se sections is acceleration um, in the positive direction. Um, downhill sections are d um, deceleration, so slowing down in the positive direction. Below the axis, uphill sections are deceleration and downhill sections are acceleration. Um, the steeper the graph, the greater the acceleration. For speed, you can just read the value off the velocity axis. Distance travelled is always the area under the graph and a curve represents changing acceleration. So there's quite a lot of stuff there, so take the time to write it down. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is study the uh, graph at the top of this page, and I've labelled certain sections with letters. So using your rules, I'm pressing pause, I would like you to try and match the uh, descriptions to the letters in the graph and we'll do one together. So movement at a steady velocity in the positive direction. So using your rules, flat sections represent fixed velocities. So we're looking for a flat section, there's only one on this graph and it is on the positive side of the x-axis. So the first one would be B. So I expect you to write down the statements and um, put the letters by them. So press pause and do that now. So next one, uh, acceleration in the positive direction away from the starting point. So in the positive direction means it will be above the x-axis and acceleration will always be an uphill, set, um, uphill um, gradient. So that will be A. Deceleration in the positive direction. Well, there's only one section we haven't covered in the in the uh, positive 
um, half above our x-axis, and that's C, and it's it's um, it's a downhill section above the x-axis, which means it's deceleration. So I'll put that in here. A point representing change of direction. Well, that's D. So if you were a man moving, you'd be moving uh, uh, like let's say walking forward, going faster here. Then you'd travel at a steady speed going forward. Then you'd slow down going forward through C. And at D, you'd stop and then change direction as you went beneath the x-axis. So D is the point representing the change of direction. Acceleration in the negative direction um, is E. So remember, beneath the x-axis, downhill sections are acceleration. and it um, it's it's a, it's in the opposite direction, so in this case our man will be walking backwards, and uh, he'd be sp he'd be speeding up in the negative direction, and F um, would be um, deceleration, so it'd be slowing down in the negative direction. So the extension, um, what is the acceleration and how far? was travelled in the first 10 minutes. So that's um, um, from here to here. So we're, we're worried about this little triangle here. So remember, the acceleration can be found from the gradient, which is always the change in y-axis over the change in x-axis. And the distance is always found from the area. So, you know, people might recognise underneath A we have a triangle. Can you remember the area of a triangle? So if, uh, if you're feeling confident, pause the video and see if you can work it out yourself before moving on. Um, if you're a bit stumped, then just carry on and we'll go over it. So acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So the change in velocity in the first 10 seconds, well, it finished at 60 uh, meters per minute in this case, and it started at zero. Um, and the change in time, well, it finished at 10 and it uh, 10 uh, minutes and it started at, at the start zero minutes so that gives us 60 minus 0 divided by 10 minus 0 ignoring the zeros 60 divided by 10 which gives you 6 and that would be uh, the units for acceleration would be 6 meters per minute squared um, and I've not put that on the PowerPoint so 6 meters per minute squared would be the um, uh, unit that's needed there. Um, the second one is the um, is the distance travelled and on a velocity time graph the distance travelled is always the area underneath the graph uh, in that re um, in the area you're interested in. So we're interested in this triangle the formula for the area under a triangle is half base times height so uh, the base is 10 um, representing um, 10 minutes and the height is um, 60 uh, meters per minute and so you get end up with half times 10 times 60 so 10 times 60 is 600 and half of that is 300 and distance is in meters here because the distance part of your velocity expression was quantified in meters Okay, so make sure you've got the um, the distance being the area under the velocity time graph. Okay, so um, in a so this video is going to end here, and I'm going to put some practice question uh, practice worksheet for you to do, and I'm going to do the answers and scan them in and make sure um, they're there for you. So now go on to this practice worksheet. Once you've done it, correct yourself using the answers, and as normal, take photos, submit to show my homework as evidence. Okay, thank you very much.